Hello everyone, this is Anushka Maan and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, after so many people commented and requested on my YouTube channel, I am going to share some tips and tricks that help me boost my DILR scores. These are the same tips and tricks that help the people who are attempting CAT to uh, get like 99 percentile plus in the CAT examination in the DILR section. So for the longest time, I was not making a video on this topic and the reason being that, you know, DILR is that topic wherein you don't have a fixed syllabus per se. The no matter how many questions you attempt, you know, how many questions you practice, you still get a different question, a different set in the actual CAT examination. And for me per se, I did not follow a, you know, structured uh, preparation strategy or a fixed you know, guide to actually prepare for DILR. I scored 98 point something percentile in the DILR section in CAT 2023 examination. And uh, I was not able to put these points together as to how I enabled myself to actually come from 80, uh, scoring 85 percentile in my first few mocks to scoring 98 point something percentile in the actual CAT examination because I do not follow a fixed guide because DILR is a lot about developing that logical bent of mind and this is something that I talk about very often in my videos in my previous videos that for DILR there is no fixed labels even the books you could be uh, referring to any sort of books you could be referring to Arun Sharma you could be referring to some ebooks provided by different coaching institutes whatever resource that you are referring to you will realize that Despite doing all those questions, like even if you do all those questions, you'll realize that in the actual CAT examination, if you attempt, the kind of sets, the kind of questions are different. It's never the same question coming in over there. But what really helps you to ace the DLR section is to develop that logical bent of mind. You should be able to, with practice, be able to, you know, tame or uh, tune your mind in such a manner that whenever it sees a particular DLR problem, it starts following a certain approach. And that approach is what I would want to share in this particular video. So after vigorously skimming through all the notes, every single notebook that I had from my CAT preparation time, I have put together a list of points that actually helped me boost my scores in the DLR section. And I'll share those with you. First of all, how many sets to attempt or to practice every single day to develop that logical bent of mind that I'm talking about. Now, what I mean by logical bent of mind is like, for example, you see a particular question in DILR. For example, it's a linear arrangement question. It's a linear arrangement question. Now, if you have been practicing a couple of questions, you will see that no matter how lengthy or short the questions related to linear arrangement are, they all follow, you can follow the same strategy or the same approach to solve the questions for linear arrangement. A similar thing can be done for, for example, something related to a spider chart. Maybe if in DI you get a question related to a spider chart. So if you have done adequate amount of practice, you will not get the same question exactly in the CAT examination, but you will have that approach in your mind that whenever you see a spider chart question, this is the approach you can follow to actually solve that question in a structured manner. One mistake that a lot of aspirants do and they get stuck in the DILR section is that they don't uh, solve the question in a structured manner. They write certain points here, certain points there, then they don't know how which points to consider and then they miss out on certain points. So basically what I want you to do is to practice three to five sets every day if you are a beginner. And maybe eventually you can uh, increase it to five to seven sets of DILR per day. You can do around three to four sets of DI, three to four sets of LR. For me personally, I loved LR more. So I used to solve like around six to seven or maybe 10 sets of LR because I used to enjoy LR so much. It was like, you know, solving some puzzle sort of thing. And I always looked forward to it. DI was something that I actually did not like at all. But I still forced myself to solve about four to five questions of DI, four to five sets of DI every single day. 
this is something that I did uh, in the second half of my preparation journey that is um, during the month of September, October or mid-August per se. But initially I used to stick to around uh, five sets of DILR per day that I used to practice from the ebooks that were provi provided by my coaching institute. I did not refer to any other books. Uh, I did look up a few questions from Arun Sharma as well but majorly I was depending on the ebooks per se. But if you guys, if you want a good holistic resource pool regarding uh, the DILR questions. I can ask and consult a couple of my friends over here who have prepped for DILR on their own and have scored 99 plus percentile in it by referring to different different sources. I can make a consolidated video on that and share it with you guys. But for now, I refer to the ebooks provided by my coaching institute and uh, did around three to five sets initially for the DILR section and then increase it to 5 to 7. Now DILR as I said it does not have a fixed syllabus. So how do you improve your score in it? The How do you make sure that you get a good percentile in this particular section? The thing is that there are two major things that help you ace the DILR section in the CAT examination. Number one is the ability to choose the sets properly. In the CAT examination, you get four to five sets of DILR every single year. You don't have to attempt every single set. I remember that the year in which I gave the CAT examination, I think I solved around, uh, if I'm not wrong, 2.5 to 3 sets of DILR and I was able to score 98.76 percentile. And if you would have score, uh, if you would have solved three or three and a half sets of DILR, you would have scored 99.5 plus percentile easily. So you don't have to solve every single set in DILR. You have to choose the one which you are most comfortable with and then go ahead with it. But then the question arises that how to choose a DILR set. So what I used to do was I used to like after having practiced the sets during the entire preparation journey, I had understood I had come up with three criteria per se. These were the criteria that I roughly followed to identify whether or not I have to attempt the set or not. First of all, I used to, whenever I, I would attempt a mock, I would first see that, uh, I would first skim through the questions, the different different sets there are. Now for me, as I just said, I enjoyed and I loved solving LR more than DI and I was more comfortable in the LR sets. So whenever I saw an LR set, I was naturally more inclined to solve those sets. So whenever I was skimming through the sets in the mock, uh, in the mock or the sectional mocks, whatever I was giving for DILR, I used to have a natural inclination towards the LR sets. Second thing I used to see was the language of the questions. Sometimes the language of the DILR sets is very twisted, it's very complex. The question could be easy, but if the uh, language is kind of twisted, it's complex, then it's going to take you a lot more time to actually decode what the question is actually trying to say to you. This is something that happened with me in the actual CAT examination that I was solving the second set, I think, and uh, it took me around 20 minutes to solve that set. I was very, very scared. Now, okay, this is a side story, by the way. I was able to score a good amount of percentiles in my mock so far in the DILR, but in the actual CAT examination, when I was attempting the DILR section for the first 20 minutes, I could not crack even a single set. And you know, it is a big, big deal because and I was on the verge of breaking down, but then I calmed myself down, brought integrated uh, whatever I had in me together and I told myself that no matter what happens, two set to me solve karke hi jaungi. Or if not two, at least one set I'm going to solve. I'm not, I'm not gonna let this go. But thankfully, I was able to solve around two and a half to three sets in DILR. Wo last moment par wo crack ho gaya ho set, kaise? I don't know, but Yes, this is something that can happen all the, with anyone. I'm not trying to scare you, but what I'm trying to tell you is to practice more so that you're able to avoid such kind of uh, problems or any such kind of setbacks that might come in the actual examination. So talking about how to set the DILR set, first of all, I used to see whether it's a DI set or an LR set. Some of my friends who really loved, you know, numbers and all those stuff, they used to have a natural inclination towards DI, but I loved LR more. So that was one th criteria. The second one was the language part. So by skimming through the question, you will get an idea if the language is twisted or is the 
question very straightforward. Third thing is the length of the question. A lot of times the questions could be very, very simple. This used to happen a lot of times in the arrangement questions that those questions could be very simple to solve. But the thing is, you have a limited amount of time and you cannot sit down and read through 13 points or 13 constraints if they are given in the question. So basis whether it's a DI or LR question. Second, whether um, what's the language of the particular question or rather also the concept because in the mocks or the sectional mocks that I was attempting, if there was a question for linear arrangement or circular arrangement, I used to solve it for sure because these were the topics that I was absolutely 100% comfortable with. So on the basis of the language and the type of concept that you are comfortable with in this section, you can choose or make a maybe make a brief uh, idea in your head that this is what these are the questions that I might be solving. And third is the length of the question. Now next thing is, this is something which is very, very, very important. I learned it much later in my preparation journey and that's why I was struggling and on the verge of breakdown during the month of September because my scores in DLR was were fluctuating so much. But when I started applying this particular trick, it really improved the overall score, the overall strategy and the overall ease with which I solved the DLR section. And this trick is time management. It used to happen with me in almost every other mock up, ten, up until mid-September or beginning of September that I used to spend too much time on one mock. I it was it used to feel like he bus hone wala hai question. Are ho jayega solve. Are ho jayega. And then I would spend like around 10 minutes or 15 minutes on a single set on a single question. And then I will not have time to actually solve the questions which were much more doable, which were much more easier to actually attempt. And then I would lose out on that time. I would lose out on scoring more on the easier part of or, or on the easier sets in the question paper. So once I started, once I set a strict time limit about how much time I'm going to devote to every single question, my life became so much easier. So what I will suggest is what I used to do was you have 40 minutes in the examination. So as soon as you enter this particular section, take three minutes per set just to go through the set and to check whether or not you are able to actually uh, you know, uh, solve that particular question. Will you be able to reach a particular answer? Is the set doable? And trust me, once you start doing this practice in your mocks or in the sample questions, whatever you're solving, you'll get an you'll get an, a hang of how to actually skim through the questions properly. Or aapko ek bar mein samaj a jayega, usko read karke ya thoda sa solve karke ki ye question mein end tak solve kar sakti hu ya kar sakta hu ya nahi. So what you can do is take three minutes per set to analyze ki ye set doable hai ya nahi hai. What is the complexity of this set? Kya iska answer nikal paayega ya nahi nikal paayega? Now, what you have to keep in mind is, three, as soon as three minutes are over, if you have decided whether or not to attempt that question, mark it as a star, otherwise move on to the next question. You're not going to spend even a single extra second on that previous set. So, three fours are twelve. So you, your 12 minutes are gone in deciding what sets you wish to attempt in the question. Now say you have decided that you will attempt three sets and trust me that three sets are in general, they are enough to score you 99 plus percentile in any CAT examination on an average. So say you have decided on three sets. Now assign eight minutes per set. This is what I also used to do. I used to assign that eight minutes per set for solving and attempting the questions. Now, as soon as the eight uh, minute limit or time limit was over, I used to move on to the next set, no matter how tempting it is to spend a little more time or, a, or one extra minute on the previous set, do not do that, it's a trap. I want you to set clear demarcations with respect to time for every single set. That still leaves you around with a few extra minutes in case you get stuck in certain set in case you want to revise or go back to a certain set. So you see how if you put these clear lim uh, time limit demarcation, time limits for yourself in the actual questions that you are practicing, you will be able to boost your scores or boost your performance in this set or in this particular section much, much more. Now last trick 
which is something that my mentor also used to reiterate again and again in the classes and something that is very 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 important and it's a very easy thing to you know uh, implement in your examination but a lot of aspirants don't do it and then they end up taking more time than they have to and they end up getting confused in the even in the simplest questions in dilr and this trick is to stay consistent with the symbols with the alphabets and with the diagrams you are using to solve the questions for example if you have say when i used to solve the circular arrangement questions now there are multiple ways in which you can do the circular arrange arrangement questions you can either make this sort of uh, a pizza sort of thing make lines and put every single member at the end of each line or you can make these little circles i used to go with this uh, circle approach wherein say if the question says in the beginning of the question it says that there are eight people that you have to arrange so i used to make these eight circles very quickly and then solve the question accordingly and this is this kind of diagram that i followed consistently in all my practice questions in all my practice mocks and even in the actual cat examination if you try to switch the way you represent the questions or you represent the pointers and constraints in the questions you are going to end up in a lot of trouble in a lot of confusion in the actual cat examination so stick with one set of format which is easy to write easy to understand and also takes less amount of time and stick with it consistently second thing is about the different different constraints that are given in certain questions there could be a certain question wherein they give you 13 points that you have to refer to to actually solve the question so what i used to do was on the right side of the paper i used to jot them down one by one in pointers that these are the different different points that i have to solve and then one by one i used to whatever points that i'd utilized in the question i used to make sure to put a tick mark in front of it and then the leftover ones i used to analyze that whether or not i can use them further in the question to get to the solution part so as you see just like the diagrams i also had a certain fixed way in which i wrote down the constraints and utilized them in my question third thing that you can also do in this thing is uh, about the names that are there now you will notice that if you practice a certain number of dlr sets you will notice that they can give you 10 names they can give you four names most of those times the names are in the first letter of the names are in an alphabetical order it could be something like andy bela jameli something with d so what i used to do was i used to take the first letter of everybody's name in case there are there were people with uh, for example if there were two people with name starting with a then i would take a three letter acronym for that however in most cases you will observe that the names are starting with a b c d so do not sit down and write the entire complete names in the while when you are solving the questions save time wherever you can use those acronyms and try using the same trick again and again and again even in your practice mocks and then utilize the same in your actual mock this is not going to just save your time it is also going to help you to avoid any sort of confusion because remember when you are actually attempting the cat examination there it is not just the time pressure it's also the pressure of a lot of 100 things that you take inside the examination hall with yourself and you don't want yourself to end up getting confused in simple questions like these and just because you just didn't know how to write the questions the pointers in the questions properly so these were certain tips and tricks that helped me boost my scores in the dlr section now i'm also thinking uh, that maybe i can have someone some maybe some alumni from alumnus from i am someone who has had experience mentoring students for cat and other mba exams who can possibly come and share the tips and tricks in how to attempt and how to score better in quants and dlr or maybe vrc also so maybe i can approach certain people and have some sessions with you guys but please let me know in the comment section if you actually want such a session because if i get in a certain number of response i'll reach out to such people and uh, make sure that i get the best of the mentors for you so that it helps in your cat preparation thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was helpful for you if you have any other videos any other video suggestions any other doubts that you have and you want me to make a video on 
please comment it down below and I'll make sure to see what I can do and make a video for you. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye.